Bitcoin's technicals are overstretched and show clear signs of a larger correction. Counter to what many may think, this is in fact a necessity to maintain a healthy trend. There are two ways in which such a correction could unfold, and here's exactly how. <laughs> I have no doubts whatsoever that Bitcoin will climb towards remarkable levels throughout this year, yet I do expect some migraine action on its way up. For as frequently discussed throughout this series and particularly in this episode, whatever handsome gains Bitcoin may result in by the end of the year will be at the expense of some gut-wrecking volatility. And we may be in for just that, for when I study my charts there are clear signs that we may be in for some unpleasantries very soon. And those signs are exactly what we'll look into in this episode. But first, nothing of what I say is financial advice. Everything I say is for entertainment purposes only. You must do your own due diligence prior to any investments. And if this episode helps you better understand the technical strength of Bitcoin and what likely lies ahead, then please hit the like and subscribe buttons. These episodes take a lot of time to make and your clicking support is greatly appreciated. Let's now deconstruct the charts to see what they're really made of. Proper technical analysis is all about distinguishing signals from noise and to put together a coherent picture of the situation at hand. This is the difficult part and the reason alone why most technicians still end up losing money, just like 98% of all card counters at Blackjack. And those are the actual numbers, I'm not just throwing them out there. When I look at Bitcoin, I see multiple things coming together, and in this case we're talking about several short to mid-term bearish signs, but which on their own are a necessity for a healthy sustainable markup. We'll go through them one by one, and I'll do my best to tie the bag together in a neat and coherent fashion at the end of the episode. Now the first thing I want to bring to our attention is something that few may actually be aware of. I'm talking about the three markup stages from bottom to top. What I mean by this is that a normal bull run typically goes through three stages of support lines. One primary, one intermediary and one short term one. Normally these are all intertwined and may look something like this. With Bitcoin on the other hand it rather does them one by one. Still of course with some intermediary moves throughout the primary trend and with some steep short term trend moves throughout the intermediary trend. Now basically what these three stages mean for Bitcoin is that any bottom to top journey is made up by three different support trends. And the key point is that the earlier in you are the flatter the lines. This goes hand in hand with the technical notion that exponential moves are almost exclusively seen at the very end of a market cycle, albeit a mini market cycle. But as a whole they're lined up incrementally where each new stage per classical technical analysis is much shorter and steeper than the previous one. I will still go over it here to some extent, but to anyone who wants to learn more about it I recommend you to read Martin Prink's Technical Analysis Explained. For when it comes to laying a solid technical analysis ground for yourself, this book, or shall we rather say 800 page break, has got it all covered. You can get it via the affiliate link in the description, and as mentioned in the short December chronicle, I have some big plans for this channel, several of which will require me to hire people. And after the taxman has had his life-sucking prima knock to go at it, any petty amount that may result from recommendations like these will go directly towards turning those ideas into reality. All with the ambition to keep on improving your viewing experience on this very channel. Now the first line is the one with the least inclination. This is the primary trend line support. We can call it the base of the entire market cycle, just like the 200 moving average on the daily or 50 moving average on the weekly are just that. However, at some point the price swaps and initiates a steeper incline for more aggressive moves. This is the intermediary trend line, and as any trader ought to know, no steep price action is ever sustainable for long. At least not when adjusted for inflation. 
But before the trend gets fully strained, it proceeds onto its short term trend, which is even steeper. This in turn does not live for long. As we can see in Bitcoin's case, the 2017 move lasted for no less than 82 weeks, the intermediary one for 32 weeks and the short term trend line couldn't sustain for more than 5 weeks before running out of steam. And mind you again, this is all on a log scale. This is what it looked like on a normal scale. It sure gives further perspective to their internal relationship as the primary line all of a sudden looks flat like a railroad, whereas the short term support nearly resembles a near vertical line. But here's the thing, now we're at it again. The primary line looks healthy and sound, but the intermediary line certainly doesn't. So look at this little thug right here. It more resembles the short term parabolic run than that of the intermediary one. And I'm not just talking about the angle itself, I'm also talking about its technical characteristics. If we look at the 2017 one, it moves with healthy airy waves throughout, just like it's supposed to. This current one however clings onto the line as if it were stuck by vertigo. Almost like that of the previous 5 week blow off move before the fall. So this is my first cause of concern, but as mentioned, technical analysis is all about looking at the full picture by putting relevant pieces together. And there's an interesting paradox here that you may want to take with you, for the less related those individual pieces are, the more relevant they in turn become when they end up saying the very same thing. For that reason, let's move on to the second part of our analysis. Throughout most of the 2017 markup, Bitcoin established a rising wedge. This occurred parallel to that of the intermediary trend. In fact, the support line of that rising wedge was the very same as the intermediary trend line. Now, traditionally, per classical technical analysis, rising wedges are bearish patterns from which the breakouts statistically take place downwards. Bitcoin on the other hand tends to go against that norm and normally breaks out upwards. But when an asset or equity breaks above an ascending channel of any kind, including a rising wedge on a log scale, it's an immensely bullish sign and typically something that coincides with the short term near vertical support, or shall we rather say melt up or parabolic move. These are textbook signs of an ending uptrend. If we fast forward back to our present day chart, we see that we have another rising wedge. Although the problem with this is that I don't think Bitcoin is even remotely ready for that exponential move yet. Far from it, for compared to the intermediary trendline wedge of 2017, our markup has barely begun. Hence, a blow off top now or within a few weeks would make no sense whatsoever. And from that, we can naturally conclude that this wedge resistance will be strong tempered. Having said that, it would make perfect sense for the price to make another final move up for now to test that rising wedge resistance. In this case, we're talking about a move well into the 70,000s, depending on when it were to occur. This range would also neatly match the up resistance of the ascending channel on a normal chart. Despite this, Bitcoin has just flirted with its support line for the fourth time and has even slightly broken below it. So far this isn't anything alarming. Still I do hold it for likely that we could break out downwards, especially as the short term charts look quite tired and exhausted. Still, it would not surprise me at all if Bitcoin were to make one final exhaustion pump from these levels before collapsing for now. My third concern which actually confirms all of these omens is the RSI. First of all, we have a 3 point RSI divergence on the daily and the weekly. And given my overall technical worries, this sure is something that could affect the price negatively, to which it could literally decide to break down from the rising wedge without first visiting the 70k range resistance. Now the monthly RSI however, that's where my main concern lies. It's already well into its 90s, which is strenuously high for any monthly RSI. Trust me when I say, this is gonna burst soon. But that doesn't mean it cannot make a final little run on the price for a strong March RSI closing or an early April pump spike before rolling over. 
The good thing with a monthly correction is that even fairly humble price movements can greatly reset the RSI itself. That's because the buyers are overwhelmingly in control during this primary markup that even small price retracements make Bitcoin interesting to investors again. Putting all of these technicals together, I say there's a good chance this seemingly intermediary trend line is in fact not the real one, but that we may be in for either a steep correction or a time-based correction at which Bitcoin will hover in a sideways range for some time to come. In either case, this would cause two things to happen. One, we would get a more conventional intermediary trend line markup move with a broader correction for a healthy and sustainable trend. For this right here, no, this is not sustainable. If this were to be the ultimate intermediary trend, then what would a blow off move in turn look like? Like this? I don't think so. 2. The monthly RSI would greatly cool off, and the daily and weekly RSI divergences would have proven to be legit and justified warnings. The way I see it is this. If the price were to break out downwards from this rising wedge, I wouldn't be too worried about it to be honest, for we have quite a lot of support behind us. This would more likely amount to a sideways range, as in a time-based correction where we retest the areas at around a strong technical support between 39 and 42,000 at lowest. For here, we have a strong horizontal support from the local top. We have the EMA ribbons, and just below that we have a fat green Ichimoku Kumo that should hold us up like the hand of God. And in itself, a test of this daily chart Ichimoku is overdue. If on the other hand, we were to test the 70,000 range resistance soon, I would expect Bitcoin to get rejected and to be followed by a vastly steep and aggressive sell-off. One that would cause many investors to seriously contemplate whether this markup is entirely over. Which it won't be, but that's what they'll think. And that's when Bitcoin will be at its most potent to shoot right back up again, just like we've seen during the 2017 markup, and as we've discussed in full throughout this series. In that sense, the ideal technical scenarios, in my opinion, for a sustainable and healthy primary markup would therefore be if the price were to either test the rising wedge resistance near the end of this month, get rejected and drop by about 40-50% to during April-May for a monthly RSI call-off that would easily bring it back to 55-65, to or for an immediate rejection at which we will be in for some sideways hovering of up to around two months before the price is nicely rested and fueled up for another northbound trip. Either of these scenarios would amount to a less steep and more long-term viable intermediary trend with wave characteristics, which on its own would prolong its longevity back to normal proportions. Either of these scenarios would be a prerequisite, in my opinion, for the markup to last for at least another half year. On a final note, if we were to enter the 70k range soon in an exhaustion pump, I will release 100% of my marathon position and also a fair chunk of my Bitcoin and Ethereum holdings. For I cannot see how Bitcoin will just fly through this without a fight. And even if it could, it is highly unlikely. That was all for now. Thank you and goodbye.